Hello everyone, welcome to Grown Oak, the garden at Royal Oaks and Orchard. Today, I'm going to be giving you a tour of my garden. We have changed the garden a whole lot this year, and we're going to get started with the screen porch. So in the screen porch, we keep some plants that are either young or have been like transplanted recently. This is the one exception. This is a subarctic plenty tomato. We keep these plants in the screen porch because it's a bit filtered sun. They get a little less sun and stuff. But yes, the subarctic plenty is one of our eight varieties of tomatoes that we're growing. It's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's the best, but it's okay. We probably won't grow it next year though. Over here, this is coxcomb flowers. And above that we have curry, curry leaf plants or curry plants. Curry leaf trees, you could call them. These are all curry leaf trees. Next to them, we have this plant. And this is one of my favorites. This is the newest, not the newest. This is one of the new additions to the orchard. And it is a nanking cherry. We thought it had died, but somehow it sprouted, so we decided to keep it. And we're going to keep it in here because it's a very young plant. We didn't move it into the orchard yet. Hopefully next year, it'll be ready to be transplanted. We have some more coxcomb flowers here. You can see this one is starting to kind of bud. And we have stored these, or we have planted these in our new planter box. You can see it has reinforced screws and stuff too. Now over here, we have some of these plants here. You can see that butterfly. This is the zinnias. There's lots of different colors of them. There's like brown, pink, purple. There's even like white rose color and stuff. But this, I've never seen this butterfly in our garden before. If you know what variety it, variety it is, please let me know. It's on, also in the bus, uh, it's also in the uh, planter box, as you can see. There's another better view of that butterfly. Next to that, down here, we have some curry plants in that small brown pot. Next to that, we have figs, which is a Chicago hardy, and then the moringa, as you can see, the doubly compound leaf tree. Behind that, we also have some more moringa. If you come around here, you can see it a little better. So in that grow bag with the blue tube, you can see there is the moringa. But next to that, we have the curry plants and the cucumbers over there. Cucumbers and the dosakai, which is the actual name for it, also known as the sambar cucumber, they were attacked by bacterial wilt this year, spread by the cucumber beetle. So we lost our cucumbers to it, which is very sad. We lost them last year as well to the same thing. But behind this moringa, you can see this variety of jasmine. I'm not sure what variety this is specifically, but it does bloom pretty well. It just has been infested by uh, white flies and we've been trying to get rid of them, but they just won't go. They went away a little bit this time. Over here, we have some cluster beans. And next to that, we have some cucumbers. This is the new set we've started. This time, we're not gonna show mercy to those cucumber beetles. Next to that, over here on the ground, we have, or in a pot on the ground, we have the curry leaf plant, curry tree. Next to that, we have some dye red chilies. Those, that's our favorite variety of peppers, by the way. And next to that, we have another curry plant. And we have this green here. This is like gr some variety of greens. Our friend gave it to us, and we're not really sure the actual name. We're not really sure of the actual name. But it is very kind of like buttery, almost like Malabar spinach, which I'll show you. Over here, we have some more Thai red chilies. And the mango. This mango we've had for about three years. I'm planning to make it into a bonsai mango, so that video will probably also come out sometime soon. Now on this side, we have the rosemary, some lavenders, banana trees. Our original banana trees died, unfortunately, so we have to get these new ones. So we have these new ones now. Uh, lavender and then the rosemary. They both look pretty similar, the lavender and the rosemary. Lavender is on your left, rosemary is on the right. You can see them here. And surprise, surprise, the lavender has flowered for you guys. I just saw this today, which is really nice. I can't wait for them to get into full bloom. That's when they have that uh, signature lavender smell. Here we have the blueberry. This is a new addition to the garden. So we're the rosemary and lavender. Previously, the rosemary was in a pot. This variety of blueberry, though, is O'Neill. Next to that, we have the Chandler variety, which is, yes, the quarter size blueberry. Over here we have the Misty, which is our smallest variety, and the Blu-ray next to that. They all have been kind of um, 
eaten by June bugs. They're just really annoying pest. We still have the pineapples too. And the pineapple, the other pineapple over here. So you can see there. Then behind the blueberry bed, we have the this moringa. Now in the last tour video, I'm pretty sure we didn't have this moringa, but this is the big moringa that's grown in that sandy soil. And that's a, that's a video on my channel if you didn't see that. And you can see the lemon too. The lemon was is amazing this year. It branched out finally after like three years. This is like my favorite plant that I'm growing from seed right now. And that is from seed. We really didn't put that much fertilizer or anything for it either. We just up potted it and it came. Those are the strawberries. And this back here is a powder blue blueberry. So we have five different varieties of blueberries this year too. Right next to that, we have this kind of wildflower patch, more like a wild grass patch now because I forgot to trim these. It's, I'm supposed to trim it today, but uh, next to that, we have these sulfur cosmoses and another variety of, um, of flower here. It will be in the description so you can see. And this is um, Arabian jasmine. I really like this variety. Uh, but I can't really seem to find a flower. There are lots of buds as you can see. Those are the jasmine buds. This is my one of my favorite flowers like in the garden. The smell is so nice. Back here we have this. This is also the jasmine. It's the same thing. We just propagated it from a cutting of the Arabian jasmine. So it's also Arabian jasmine. So that's basically what we have in the patio. But there's one more thing which is this. This is a broom that we made from dried coriander leaves and zip ties. And it works great. We use that sometimes to clear out some like leaves and stuff that sometimes get blown onto the patio. Anyway, now we're gonna head into the main garden. We finished the fence and everything. We have this greenhouse too. This is also a new addition. It's a, it's a huge new addition. It is a six by eight, a Harbor Freight greenhouse. I'm not really gonna show you inside cause it's a little messy. It's just so hard to clean it up in the sun and it gets really hot. But as soon as you come in, you have this marigold in this pot. And I'm probably guessing they're root bound, which is why they look so sad. But before they were doing so great, there was like a bunch of blooms. They kind of got the pollinators to come into the garden. I have to mulch this area. I haven't mulched it yet, but I have mulched some of the other parts of the garden. That's one of the tasks as well for the garden cleanup. Next to that, we have this area. There used to be broccoli here and they were doing really good. They were in our winter garden, but now the broccoli season is over. So they had to be taken out. Over here in this pot, we have some eggplants. And through it, you can see this, they, really the varieties for these were really confusing. They just called this small round green eggplant. So I'm not sure what variety that's supposed to be, but it looks like a Kermit eggplant kind of, somewhat. And you can also see another eggplant here. This was called small round purple. But that area, that half of the bed is taken over by the eggplant. I'm really happy about the eggplant this year. Never produced this much in our many years of gardening. So this year, we are really taking it 100%. Another treat for you guys, a little bee pollinating eggplant flower. Those guys are really very docile. They won't like sting you or anything. I've even touched them sometimes. This is the monster's giant of the garden. This is the hyacinth bean. This will literally take over your whole garden. It is at about 10 feet height right now. And if it doesn't rain or it's not windy, it'll go up to strongly 11 feet. It's so tall and it's so vigorous. You can see that's what the bean looks like. And it's really good. So don't really worry about fertilizing or anything. We didn't fertilize these guys really. We just put in a little bit of fish fertilizer that we usually do for the whole garden, but they grow like crazy. Now we're moving on to the tomatoes, which is right next door. This is the single stem method. It allows for easier pruning and harvesting. We have these varieties here. These are seven varieties of tomato. That you just saw was early girl. Here is better boy. These guys don't really produce that much as they get older, but they do give a pretty early, nice harvest. And they produce a decent size tomatoes. Next to that, we have the green zebra. This is a new variety we're growing this year. We really, really recommend you grow this variety. I'm probably gonna do a best tomato variety video based off of all the tomatoes varieties we've grown. This green zebra is one of the tops. It's an heirloom variety, as you can see that 
curly tomato there. Really, really recommend it. It produces huge tomatoes, great harvest. That you just saw the Amish paste, which is a really long kind of like Roma style tomato. Over here, we have the Brandywine tomatoes, which are quite short compared to the other tomatoes. You can see the Amish paste, uh, better boy and early girl, they just shoot up almost crossing the trellis bars up there. And the green zebra doesn't really do it, but the green zebra and brandywine are very similar as in size and weight. But the green zebra produces more than the brandywine. So that's why I really recommend the green zebra. But the brandywine does, just doesn't seem to do as good as the other varieties in height and production wise. Next to that, we have the stupichka tomato. I wouldn't consider this a cherry tomato. It's a little too big, I guess. Or maybe it's considered a large cherry tomato. But it is also really good. We really like it. Next to that, though, we have this. This is definitely a cherry tomato. This is the Mexico Midget Cherry Tomato. It produces lots of small, round tomatoes. They're, they're quite small, but it does produce a ton of them. And you can see they've grown a lot. And you can also see this bean in the middle, the red noodle bean. That's the plant that we have next door. It's kind of invading its neighbor but the red noodle bean is a really nice kind of like a yard long bean and we also have the green noodle it's not really called the green noodle but it is a green yard long bean and there are a few stink bugs on here i just noticed that today as i'm taking this video so there is a treatment for that so we're going to do that this afternoon because it's too hot right now it's almost like 100 degrees out here in tennessee anyways Coming along here, we only have one green yard long bean plant, so we're gonna show you that. That's why I'm coming around here. So you can see all of these red noodle ones, and in the middle right here, there's the green yard long bean and the red ones, so you can see. But next to this tomato and bean bed, we have the gongura, which is a Telugu name, or in other words, in English, it would be called Rosel. The This is one of our favorite greens. I really like it, especially if you make like a chicken soup with it. It tastes really good. We started these very early this year, so that's why it's so bushy. We've, ta we've taken lots of harvest from these as well. So the trick to Rosell is to start it early. That video is also coming out, hopefully by next year, in the beginning of the season. But in between, the Gongura or Rosell has kind of taken up space from the bell pepper next door. Bell pepper, this year the peppers were kind of a flop, really. We had a big mix-up, and the pepper variety sometimes got lost. So you can see here, this is a funny colored bell pepper. I've never seen this color before, but we've harvested these kind of bell peppers. The one thing that just doesn't seem to really grow very well and produce a good harvest for us is the peppers. Last year they did good. Probably because we had good varieties and stuff, but this year the varieties got mixed up. A lot of our seedlings died because of the soil, because they didn't have the right seedling soil. So check out my seedlings, a uh, seed starting soil mix. That soil mix will really help out. This here is the cluster bean plant. I just showed you that bean right there. It, it really doesn't look like a bean. It looks more like a leaf, but it's really hard. If you look closely, you'll see it. This is our first year growing the cluster beans. And um, it's a little hard. We don't really know that much about it yet, but we are researching. Next to that, we have the collards. These guys were not that good this year. Uh, we were kind of negligent about them. But the winter garden, we're going to start them up again. This is the other side of the cluster bean row. And then next to the cayenne peppers, which are the peppers that were next to the bell peppers, we have the jalapenos. And you can see I harvested one for you guys to see. These are a little small. Uh, they can get a little bigger than this. But yeah, in this bed we have bell peppers, jalapenos, and cayenne peppers. In the next bed, next door, we have some kale. As you can see the lacinato kale. But over here we have the Malabar spinach, the red stem Malabar spinach. And it grows like crazy too. And we have black nightshade as well. Lacinato kale. And stuff in this bed this bed is kind of like our forest style bed we kind of mixed up all the plants see the nightshade berries right there those green things those are the nightshade berries they turn black when they're ripe we also have some beetroot growing in here and a sunflower too i don't know how that got in here but it got in here and it's growing 
at least add some color and we have tomatoes so this is an example of what will happen if you do not prune your tomatoes these are amish paste and green zebra varieties and they just fell on top of the landreth beans and they're just crawling anyway speaking of the landreth bean these are the landreth beans this is the bush bean variety we're growing this year and they produce like green beans like your standard green beans the thing is for bush beans they need a little more maintenance because bugs love them as you can see this year though there didn't seem to be as many bugs as there were last year and you can see this is what the bean looks like this is a small one but they get bigger and moving on to the next bed so these are the new beds these are sheet metal beds and they look really nice but here in this bed we're growing thai basil and along you see the drip irrigation uh, drip irrigation system there but uh, the next plant here would be the peppers these are also cayenne peppers those are some of the cayenne peppers are our, like favorite variety because they produced a lot and they're also very useful because you make a nice chili powder with it and they're like mild to hot in spiciness I'm not sure what the Scoville measure would be for them but they're okay so that's this bed and there is a few more plants there's also gourds and some other varieties of peppers and they're like hot cayenne and condory but next to this we have eggplants black beauty and rosa bianca if you want if you want to grow a really good eggplant it would be rosa bianca next to the eggplants though we have these okra there's clemson spineless and red burgundy and yeah about the rosa bianca eggplants they grow to one pounders one pound eggplants they're really good so next to the okra i have to come out because the okra blocked my path we have some more thai basil also some onions back there which kind of died probably because of the heat and now the gourds the gourds we are really happy about the gourds this year we got this new gourd the tindora and you can see this is what it looks like it's also called the ivy gourd or kovakai if you're speaking tamil and next to the ivy gourd the ivy gourd is really prolific we moved it here and it works great it grows great but that that big gourd right there that's a bottle gourd they can grow bigger than that usually get like three to five pounds per bottle gourd and this is what the flowers look, uh, leaves look like and i do warn you be careful to not rub these leaves because they do kind of stink next to the bottle gourds though we have the other gourds we have the bitter gourd you can see this is a different variety it's called priyanka i'm pretty sure and it is uh smooth uh supposed to the original bottle gourd which is like kind of prickly it's not like too sharp but you should be, be a little careful you don't want to like squeeze it like that it can poke you but so that's the new variety and these are snake gourds as you can see we have some more bitter gourds and snake gourds coming in this is the snake gourd flower it looks very intricate in detail but next to the bitter gourds and snake gourds we have the ridge gourds so we got ivy gourds bottle gourds bitter gourds snake gourds and then ridge gourds this i don't know what variety this is but it doesn't have ridges but they call it a ridge gourd probably you could call it like a loofah maybe that's also another name for it or i think chinese cucumber is also another name for it but these are really, really tasty. On the other side, so if I continue along from the ridge gourd, you can see the Malabar stem hanging from there. We have some zinnias, some blackberries. This is our bramble patch, along with some dotted flowers. So you can see that growth there is continuing to the garden and it caused us to turn the whole blackberry growth around. The blackberry is very vigorous in growth. You can see here, this is a an, a coxcomb flower you can see that's what it looks like once it grows we also have some marigold zinnias a sunflower this looked very pretty when it was in bloom but here this is, this is what i mean about the blackberries growth and there's like four or five stems like that and this is the first year of the blackberry so they grow really really rapidly and don't even get me mention about this guy this is the boysenberry and went on all-out attack mode so if you're growing brambles be ready for a lot of pruning and maintenance next year. Now we come to the rain barrel system. 
which is right next to the boysenberries. Uh, we don't use the tap that much anymore. We actually use that pump box over there. It looks kind of like a bird nest, but you can see the hose there. So we use that, um, this little pump here, which connects to the rain barrel through another opening on the side. So it goes into that pump and it goes through that hose connect hose outlet there. So that um, sprayer, it goes there. We also have the compost bin, which is still the rolling style and the compost tea brewing barrel. That's a new one. And above that, we have our beehive house, bee house, native bee house. This is comfrey. We have quite a few of these scattered around the garden. There was one near the boysenberry, if you paid attention. And next to that, we have the watermelons. It's really hard to weed around the watermelons because this grass and they're crawling onto the grass. So you need to be careful when you mow it. I do have one small one here. Next year, we're gonna put the watermelon in a more proper place, but you can see the bed is fully covered. It's such a small bed. We didn't give it enough nutrients and stuff. So we only got like two watermelons this year so far. But uh, on the other hand, the butternut squash is doing better. You can see there's a small squash. They're pretty small, but it's okay. There's quite a few of them. You can see there's one down there. There's a few up here and stuff, and it's doing better compared to the watermelons. Now moving on to the orchard, the new trees we have in the orchard would be this guy. This is a Chicago hardy fig. It is the bigger, it's more in that bush style, but something really happened to this guy. It's not growing at all. And it is literally just stunted in growth, but you can see some of these small figlets there. And the fig flower is unique. I might do a video on that as well, because there's just so much stuff in gardening guys. You need to know that it is a big field and there's so much knowledge you can learn from it. And there's some more figlets as you can see there. But overall, this variety is doing okay. Last year, I produced like 20 figs for this first year. We just got it last year, produced 20 figs last year. So figs, if you're looking to get a good fruit tree, go for figs. Here is our peach tree. It's a Bell of Georgia peach tree. It's also doing okay, but it flowered this year. However, it did not produce any fruit. You can see how much it grew. All this red stem growth is new growth this year. I hope it will produce some next year. We'll see. This is also in the newest addition to the orchard. This is a Violet de Bordeaux or Violet de Bordeaux. I don't really know how to say it. I don't speak French. And there's actually a story behind this. The first day I planted it, skunks or something came and dug it up and it went through a huge shock and it just started growing now. One more plant I forgot to mention though, near the okra, you can see this This is green stemmed malabar, similar to red stemmed malabar. But I do think the red stemmed malabar is more vigorous. So here's kind of like a zoomed out view of our garden. It's pretty small, but it's not like too small. Here's, a, here's that uh, Arabian jasmine and a sunflower for you guys, just to see. This is a grown or mining it growing and grow. Thank you for watching.